We're scratch printing a ski lodge today in the end scale. This is the Winter Park Balcony House project on the Iron Horse Route. Hey, this is Brian with the Iron Horse Route, home of the Denver and Rio Grand Western, welcoming you to the channel. Like I said, we scratch print in a ski lodge. And what scratch printing means over here on the Iron Horse Route is we take a picture, we design it in Tinkercad, kit form. We shoot it over to Cura, Cura slices it, we take it to the 3D printer, and we print it in kit form. Then we show you how we put it together. This is part two. We're doing it today. We're glad you're here. By 1940, the upper part of Bertha Pass had recently been developed as a ski area, but narrow and winding mountain road make access difficult. Ski enthusiasts looked for a possible location. Where can we put a ski resort? And the answer was pretty obvious. It was West Portal. West Portal was where the Moffat Tunnel Railroad emerged. Winter Park Ski Resort quickly appeared at the tunnel entrance. We had something that no other ski resort had, which is access to a rail line that dropped passengers right here at the base. With skiers able to easily hike from Denver on the train, Winter Park Ski Resort grew rapidly. The founders of the resort needed a suitable base camp to provide skier services, and in 1955, they built the Balcony House. Winter Park's original base area ski lodge, known as the Balcony House, vividly represents the early history and pioneering evolution of the city of Denver's first mountain park. The two-story balcony house with its panoramic views from cascading balconies is a unique example of mid-century modern architecture. Since 1955, the balcony house has played an essential role in skiing, snowboarding, and summer activities, as well as enhancing skiers and non-skiers' fun. We have the diorama over on the far wall um, and putting it everything together. We're just getting everything lined up. This is buildings one through three. We put these together in part one. So if you have not seen part one already, I'm going to put a card in the top right corner of the screen right here right now. You can go ahead and jump back. I've got a playlist on this thing, so you'll be able to watch that one. Then it'll play this one. And today we're going to be doing buildings uh, 3, 4, 5, and 6, as well as the roof for building 2. We're also going to be applying snow to the diorama as well. Just showing you how we mix up some snow. Uh, Buildings 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are assembled at this point. I'm doing 6 now. In the Fitting the wooden deck walkway now, that wasn't too difficult to do. Um, I just used my uh, little toothpicks. Um, I have toothpicks through there for the beans. And um, I actually printed them with a hole in them so the toothpick would put, fit snugly in there. Always looks cooler with lights. Oh yeah. Train coming around up here in Winter Park. Mm. Did some work on um, anywhere you see light bleed. I have done work for the roof. Um, I did as much as I could before I put the snow on. As John mentioned, I could, didn't want glowing snow. Um, I do have some little areas down there around the bottom. That door I still haven't fixed up. I've got plenty of um, touch-up work to do all over this thing. Uh, it is up here. It is in place now. And we do have a snow diorama.
my ability to use Tinkercad and Cura and um, apply it to the 3D printer now, um, my abilities are improving. Um, I am getting better at being able to take a picture and replicate it in Tinkercad and then make it into kit form. I would like to encourage any of you guys, if you have any you know, kits that are needed on your layout that you can't buy a kit for and you only have a picture, if you'd like help putting that together, let me know. I'll put my email down in the description. And And after this, I'll walk you through the recipe that uh, AJ and I used to get the snow together. Um, it took some getting used to playing with it. Um, I prefer it to be uh, pretty moist and uh, have no problem with a long drying time because um, I did prefer the texture. Um, if it is not wet enough it sticks to everything it's got it looks good but it sticks to everything so i'd rather have it like a cake batter consistency and um give me a little bit smoother look uh, all right we're gonna make a little snow to finish up the diorama we just have a little piece left um i can always use extra i got plenty of snow to do over there though I've been using a baking soda and baking powder combination, but I'm out of baking soda, so I'm just gonna use powder today. Basically, it's the same principle. I am just gonna add baking powder. All right, we're gonna add Mod Podge. Um, until it is a shaving cream or Cool Whip consistency. All right, we got it now. Just, it'll go from too thick to perfect pretty quick and it will dry out. You only have about a 10 or a 15 minute working time. You can add, you can add more moisture, Mod Podge, if it starts to set. See you over at the model. Tape going down. My model gets extremely close to the tracks right back there on that back side. And I mean, I've got a wall of snow that is literally brushing up against my uh, models when they run through there. They clear it fine without problem, but it's close, it's tight. And uh, that diorama sits down in there tight as well. So when I added the snow on the edges, I really had to sculpt it up.
nice look at it pretty much completed. I've got to get a, a stairs in there. Keep forgetting to do that. So a few trains running through the diorama. Does look good going through there, in my opinion, if I don't say so myself. I don't think that I have anybody with Winter Park in their layouts that I know or anybody who watches my videos or subscribes, but I could replicate this model. Um, be tough to do in HO. I could probably do it in HO. Um, it would just be a little more difficult because I would have to do it in separate pieces. Do it in Z, could do it in N, could do it in HO. I did this from pictures, pictures from the 1950s and 60s. Probably the most difficult, most challenging part was to get the to get some accurate measurements because most of the pictures were taken from quite a far away away. And in order to get the whole thing in, it had to be, especially with 1950s and 60s cameras. So. I actually set my iPhone on the track and I'm sliding it down the tracks. I don't know if that was stupid or not. But... Well, I'm not a pretty man. My next project is going to be Utley's Warehouse. It's going to be up in Clay, Colorado, which is basically between um, Jerry Satt's Mill and McKernan's Mill. I'm going to be working on that next. AJ and I want to thank you for watching today. We want to encourage you to subscribe. Click the bell icon right now, please. Smash that thumbs up for us right now, please, if you would. Leave us a comment below to let us know you were here, even if you just leave your name and say, I was here, or your name and the name of your line, whatever. Leave us a and like I said a couple times in the voiceover, I am interested in starting to construct some kits for others, so if you are interested in that, 
please reach out to me at brianj555 at outlook.com. But this is a model railroad community, and I do want you to know that if you're interested in learning how to use Tinkercad to design your own stuff for yourself, I would be happy to help you at no cost at all learn how to use Tinkercad, answer any questions you might have, help you get your feet wet with it, whatever you may need. I'm here for your help on Tinkercad. But if you'd like for me to do the kit for you, reach out to me on brianj555 at outlook.com. Or if you have questions about how to use Tinkercad, or if you'd like to learn how to use Tinkercad and would like my help, reach out to me at brianj555 at outlook.com. This is Brian with the Iron Horse Route. AJ and I were very glad that you were here with us today. We appreciate you watching. We appreciate you commenting. We certainly appreciate you smashing that thumbs up. And we would appreciate it if you share this with your other modeling friends. This is Brian with the Iron Horse Route, home of the Denver and Rio Grande Western. This has been the Winter Park Balcony House Project on the Iron Horse Route. We're glad you were here with us to watch. Thank you all.